Welcome to part five of Learning Godot. We're in the home stretch. In the previous parts, we created the different components of the game, and now we're gonna finish tying them together and completing the game. We have our main scene, we have our player, we have our mobs spawning. The piece we need to tie it all together is a UI. UI stands for user interface, and it's the thing that's gonna display what your score is, it's gonna show a game over message when the game ends, and it's gonna have a restart button so you can play again. Start by creating a new scene, and its root node is going to be a canvas layer. And we're going to name this the HUD, H-U-D. That stands for Heads Up Display, because this canvas layer is going to display on top of the rest of the game. The UI isn't overlapped by the game elements. It rests on top. The base node for all the UI elements in Godot is called Control. To create our UI, we're going to use two different types of control nodes, the label and the button. The label is for displaying information, and a button is for clicking on. So let's add some child nodes here. We're going to add a label, and we're going to name that the score label. We're going to make another label, and we're going to name that one the message label. And then we're going to add a button. And that button is going to be called the start button. And then we're going to add a timer. And that's going to be called the message timer. So the score label is going to display your score, how many points you have. The message label will show things like game over, get ready, the start button will appear when the game is over so that you can click it to play again. And the message timer will let us show these messages like get ready and have them disappear again after a certain amount of time. Now we need to arrange these nodes on the screen. And to do that, we're going to use the layout menu. So starting with the score label, we're going to set the anchor to center top. And if you were to manually resize this by dragging it around, you can go over here and hit center top again and it'll make sure it stays centered. We're going to use the margin setting to do this so that we can control it exactly. We're going to set this to minus 100 left, 100 right, and 100 bottom. And that's going to be the size for our score label. We're going to align it. We want the text to be aligned center in the horizontal and vertical, and we can test it out in here by adding some text to it. It'll make it zero. Now the default font is very small and not very good looking, but we're going to change that soon. First let's finish the layout here. Let's take the message label and we're going to put it centered on the screen. So we want to pick center, and the margins we want to use are minus 200 and 200 for left and right, Top is going to be minus 150, and bottom is going to be 27. So that will give us enough room to put various messages in there. We also want the text to be aligned center. And we're going to put some sample text in here, dodge the creeps, so that we can see what it's going to look like. And then finally, the start button. We're going to put that one at the bottom center and set its margins to minus 100 and 100 for the left and right. And top is going to be minus 200, bottom will be minus 100. So we have a nice large size button there. The text, we're just going to put start and we're going to center it, make sure it stays center. And that's our basic layout. Now to fix the font, we want to go and scroll down to where it says custom fonts. And we're going to load a new dynamic font. Click on that. And under font, you can load from the fonts folder our font that we want to use. Open that up. And in the settings, you can set the size, 64. 
nice size. On the message label, I recommend you edit the text and make this on two lines because when you make the font really big, it's going to expand out past the size of the screen. So do the same thing with the font on this one. And then finally do it for the button as well. And for the start button, I made the font size 48, a little bit smaller. Now we're ready to add a script to the HUD. And this is going to have a signal called start game that it's going to emit when we push the start button. We're going to have a show message function. that will call whenever we want to show a different message on the screen. So we take our message label and set its text equal to that value. We take the message label and we show it because we might be hiding it sometimes after things go away. And then we take the message timer and we start it. The message timer itself, we're going to set the wait time to 2. We're going to set one shot to on. Now we're going to add another function called game over that we're going to call whenever the player dies. And we're going to show the game over message. And then we're going to wait for the message timer to end. So we do that using a command called yield. And in GDScript, what yield does is it let you, lets you name a object, the message timer, and one of its signals, the timeout, is what we care about. And it will stop execution of this function until this signal appears. So we show the message, game over, the message timer starts, and not until that two seconds has gone by will we do the next thing, which is show the start button, set the message label text to the game title, This is how we do two lines. The backslash N stands for new line. And then we need to show the message label. So this means whenever you die, you'll see game over for two seconds, and then it'll go away, and the button will show up so you can play again. We're going to add an update score function that's just going to, we're going to send the score over and tell it to update the score label text. To whatever that is. And then we need to connect the timeout of the message timer and when that times out we're going to hide the message label. And then we're going to connect the pressed signal of the button so that whenever they press the button we're going to hide the start button and we're going to emit that start game signal. We're almost there. We just need to connect our HUD with our main scene. So if we go to the main scene, we can click on the main node and instance the HUD inside it. Now we can see our HUD showing up here in our main scene. We're going to take the HUD's start game signal and we're going to connect it to main's new game function that we already made. So we don't need to make the function. So now here in main, new game is going to run when the HUD sends that signal. In new game, we'll say dollar sign HUD, show message. get ready. And since we've set the score to zero, we want to update the score to that value. In the game over function, we just need to call the same function in HUD. So it does its code over there for the game over state. And then in here where the score timer 
times out, we need to make sure we update the score with that value. So let's give it a try. We're on our main scene. We're going to hit play. And we're going to see our start screen here. We hit start, and there's our player. Here come the baddies. And if the one hits me, the game is over, and I go back to ready to start again. And now that we have everything working, when we hit the main play button, it says that no main scene has been defined. So we can select our main scene and make that our default scene that runs when the game plays. So now anytime you hit this play button, it's going to play the main scene. So congratulations, you finished your first game in Godot. Now I am going to make one more video in this series. The final video will go over a few additions you can make to spice up the game a little bit. Things like sound and a background and some other little effects that will make the game look a little nicer. These are purely optional and hopefully will give you some ideas of other things you could add to spice this game up or to use in your own game projects on Godot.